Welcome to the continuation of this course on statistical data analysis using MS Excel. In this video, I'll be introducing us to another experimental design, which is one of the very common ones used in experiments, and it is called randomized complete block design. Randomized complete block design is just a step ahead of the one we did in the last seg in the last module, which was completely randomized design. So in this particular video, I will be introducing us to the design, uh, how it is set up and how it is implemented. And in another video, we'll be looking at the analysis. So let's get going. Randomized complete block design is very appropriate when the experimental units are not homogeneous. You'll recall that in the last module, we, when we looked at completely randomized design, we said completely randomized design is applicable in situations where our experimental units are homogeneous. Oftentimes, the experimental units are not homogeneous. For example, in field experiments, you realize that fertility gradient vary from one part of the field to another, and quite a number of other examples similar to that. Now, when the experimental units are not homogeneous, the appropriate design is randomized complete block design. Now, in this design, the experimental units are grouped or partitioned such that there is homogeneity within each group. The groups are also called blocks. Now, the grouping is done in such a way that variation between the blocks are more than variation within each block. So within each block, there will be homogeneity. But between one block and the other block, you see they are heterogeneous. Now, each block is divided into plots that is equal in number, I mean, equal to the number of treatments. So in an experiment, if you have, let's say, five treatments, then each block will be partitioned into five so that the five treatments can be randomly allocated to those plots within the block. The treatments are then randomly allocated to the plots within each block, such that in that kind of experiment, we talk of two sources of variation, which are variation due to blocks and variation due to treatments. Those are the two identified sources of variation. Now, the linear additive model for the design is as indicated. You have individual observation equals to the general mean plus block effects plus treatment effects plus experimental error. Now, if you compare this with what we had in our previous module under completely randomized design, you will realize that we have just this as the new addition. So we have introduced block effect, BI, to cater for block effect. Every other thing remains the same with completely randomized design. But because this is randomized complete block design, we have introduced the block effect into the model. The assumptions for this particular design are the same uh, as we had under completely randomized design. So the assumptions are simply that the treatment and the environmental effects are additive and the experimental errors are random, they are independent, and they are normally distributed with zero mean and constant variance. How do we implement the design? Let's give an example. Consider an experiment with four treatments, A, B, C, and D, and three blocks. So we have partitioned the experimental units into three to give us three blocks. But then there are four treatments. So here are the three blocks as we have block one, block two, block three. Now what we do in this instance is since there are four treatments, each block will be divided into four so that the four treatments can be randomly allocated to each block. So you can see here, each block has been divided into four. And following this division, you will now randomly allocate the treatments, the four treatments A, B, C, and D within each block. And that gives us 
an example of what we have there on our screen. Now, from that experiment, of course, the data will be extracted such that we have our treatments. In this particular example, I've arranged the treatments in columns while the blocks are in rows. But then there is no other and fast rule as to whether treatment should be in row or columns. Wherever you put it is okay. It doesn't affect your analysis. In other words, we can arrange this such that the blocks will be in the we can arrange the blocks to be in the columns and arrange the treatments to be in the rows. We'll still be very fine. Now let's see some examples of experiments where randomized complete block design is applicable. And I have uh, four examples I want to quickly go through. The first one is consider an experiment where we are interested in the performance of two varieties of tomato grown in pots with different potting mixtures. So here, the treatments are the two varieties of tomatoes. Now we are growing them on experimental units which are the pots, but we have told that the pots have different potting mixtures. So we have to group the potting mixtures, I mean, sorry, the pots based on the potting mixture they contain. And we now randomly allocate our two varieties of tomato within each potting, uh, among pots within each potting mixture. Another example is a field experiment to compare the yield of three varieties or three different cultivars of cow pea in a slopey area. Here, again, we are interested in the three different cultivars of cow pea. So these are our treatments. But then we are planting this on the slopey area. And we know, of course, from experiment on the field that when you have a slopey area, fertility tends to differ between the uphill side and the downhill side. And so because of that, we have to partition the area based on fertility gradient. And then we plant our three cultivars of cowpea within each block. So that's an example of an experiment where RCBD is also applicable. A third example is an experiment where we're interested in studying the growth performance of two tree species, say Melina arborea and Tectona grandis, you know, their seedlings, as influenced by different light intensity. So we are interested in studying this species, their growth performance to compare them, which one grows faster than the other, Melina or Tick. But then the area we are using have different light intensity. Some areas are darker, than the other, maybe some are under the shade, some other parts are not as shady, and so they receive more light intensity, and so on and so forth. So we have to partition the area based on light intensity, and then plant our seedlings within each light intensity uh, block. So that is an, another example of where RCBD is applicable. And the final one is, if we are looking at a study involving weight and carcass characteristics of poultry layers and broilers, so we want to compare broilers and layers as influenced by different management systems. Yeah. But then in the experiment, some are under deep litter, some are in cages, and so on. So because of that, we introduce block. In this example, the different management systems we constitute our blocks while the two types of beds we are comparing will constitute our treatments. So that is uh, what we have in that. Now let's summarize what we have talked about so far. Randomized complete block design is generally applicable in experiments involving two factors. So when an experiment involves two factors, Usually, randomized complete block design is applicable. And in that situation, we say we have two recognized sources of variation. Now, it is also common in field experiments and farm trials due to variability in field conditions. 
you know in lab under lab condition we can we, we can regulate the environment we can ensure homogeneity of conditions such that CRD that's complete randomized design can be easily applicable but when you move outside the greenhouse or outside the lab and you are doing field trials under field conditions oftentimes there are variability in the field conditions and randomized complete block design is more appropriate in such situations this particular design helps to reduce the error variance and makes the ANOVA test to be more sensitive. Yes, because since you are isolating blocks, block effects as one of the sources of variation, recognized sources of variation, the error variance will be reduced. And that definitely makes your test more sensitive. As we will see that when we get to our discussion on the ANOVA table for the design. Now, the statistical analysis procedure for this design is presented in another video. So I will encourage you to join me in the next video as we move on to the analysis.